Holly here, man, and I'm sitting with the former champ, Troy Dorsey, man. What's going on, brother? We got to do it like you do it hey, in the good ring, you, man. Sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Good. I'm glad you didn't throw that overhand right at me, yeah. man. I'm telling you, like, I, I, got a, I got a face for radio, and I don't want to take any I got questions. short arms. So yeah, okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> Boxing wasn't your first love. No, sir. No, your, your first love, man, it, it was karate, it was taekwondo, man. And so we'll, we'll start from there. You got into that at, at an early age. What what led you to get into that? What, what, what you know, most kids do baseball, they do basketball, they'll do football. But you said, nah, I want to go kick and punch. What what was that in your life that led you? Whether it was a, whether it was a parent, a coach, a big brother, a big sister, anybody in your life that led you to that path of wanting to do kickboxing and karate? Yes, sir. So I started karate in, in 1974. What I really liked about karate is uh, fighting. You know, I don't want to sound like I don't want to sound like you know fighting. I'm a tough guy. But anyways, yeah, uh, fighting was uh, what I really enjoyed doing. And we're sitting right across the street from where I started. I started karate in 1974 across the street. You know, some people say that you come full circle. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. I, I come full circle and across the street. <laughs> That's, so. that's, that's symbolic, right? It's like where you know, nowadays on social media, they'll have like where it started and how's it going now, right? So it's like you're on the same block of, of where it started for you right here in, in Texas. And you said you like fighting. I guess I'm weird. I don't know. <laughs> no, but, but, yeah. but what in your, like, what was in it? Because everybody has these things within them, right? That makes them tick. That makes them, you know, singers, why do singers love to sing? Why do dancers love to dance? Why do fighters love to fight? Like, is that something that you, as a young kid, you said, hey, I enjoy, I enjoy fighting. Was it, you know, did you have a lot of fights coming up when you were younger? What, what happened, the reason I started karate is because I was getting bullied. Ah. So getting bullied at school. And I started karate between fifth and sixth grade. And sixth grade, I went back to school after doing karate for a whole summer. <laughs> I was Bruce Lee, you know? <laughs> so uh, I got in a couple of fights and then uh, it wasn't that I won, it wasn't that I lost, but then after that, no one messed with me. Because once they figured out that, that I was gonna do, try to fight, then uh, then they would uh, go to someone else. Right, right. So the bullying stopped. It wasn't like I said, because I beat anybody up in the night. I just thought I fought back, that was the deal. So that's what I'm saying, that's what I wanna say, that anybody that's watching this, you're getting bullied, just fight back. Might not be with your fist, it might be with your words, might be your action, whatever, we all gotta fight back. And that's, that's coming from an experienced place, right? That, that's life has happened and now you're talking about someone sitting here 58 years old and, and, and that's words of wisdom for those who may be out there being bullied. Uh, one thing that you said, you said press forward. And so when you got to that point, you said I was bullied, I got into karate, I got into kickboxing and then I pressed forward. Not that I was looking for a fight, but your confidence changed. There was a level of, I ain't looking for it. I don't want it. But if it comes, I'll be ready for it. And was that something that kind of pushed you towards the boxing ring to make you want to put on the gloves a little bit? I'm not really sure if that was it or not. I'm not I'm really sure. I just, I guess God just put me on the turf uh, to fight and be in the ring. You know, you have rules. There's no biting. Of course, you watch out Mike Tyson, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's no biting. There's no uh, gouging in it, someone in the eyes. Uh, there's no kicking to the knees, no kicking the groin. Sometimes there is in, in martial arts, there is. But, uh, you got to go by the rules, but there's no rules in this in this uh, in this world. Yeah, really. Right. There's no rules, so uh, you just got to be ready for whatever comes along. And so there's a level of discipline, right? You get into karate, taekwondo, boxing. There's a level of discipline that you have to you have to have to be to even be engaged in it, right? Not only not even we're not even talking about being successful in it, but even to actually participate in it, you have to have this level of discipline and and, and sacrifice. Explain to me and to the viewers from a boxing perspective, karate perspective, some of the disciplines that, that you had to develop over time. Because I don't, I don't think discipline is a natural thing for people. My parents taught me early that, uh, you know, don't give up and don't give in, just give it all that you have. I learned that from my dad, the way he worked, and also with the way, by the way my mother worked. She worked at a, almost gonna make me cry here, but my mother worked at a man's job. She had a man's job, putting windows together. But I wanna make sure I mention my parents because they taught me uh, that working hard pays off. And that's what I was gonna say a while ago, is, uh, is, is you have to pay the dues, you have to work hard, you have to train, no matter whether you're fighting or you're not fighting. When I say fighting, I'm not talking about, I am talking about this, some people box, most people don't box. But everybody 
uh, go through a fight. Have you been through a fight this week and anywhere in your life? And has any of you been through any kind of a fight? Any kind of a fight? Not with your hands and feet. It was just going on. Fighting is everywhere. Yeah. And uh, you just got to keep your hands up. Literally, keep your hands up in the ring. But on the outside, keep your guard up. There's an acronym that says uh, STAR. The acronym is STAR. So stop, think, act. Then they, then they use, okay, review. So did you do good or did you do bad? So there's testing, testing, testing. It's nonstop testing of uh, all kind of things that go on. So that's what you have to do. You have to stop and think. I know there's several times I've not stopped and thought. I just reacted. Right. And it was wrong. You started boxing when boxing, boxing in itself is a brutal sport, right? And, and But you started in a time where it was like, we ain't going to do all this dancing around the <laughs> ring. It ain't going to be all this shoulder rolling. It's not going to be all this counter. Oh, hugging. You don't know. It ain't be all that holding the hugging. Like you started at a time where it was almost just two men standing in the middle of the ring. And, and we just going, we going, we going to slug it out. And we going to see who got the toughest chin and, and the best man winning. You've been in some fights. Like you, 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 you fought champions. Yes, sir. across the board you fought hall of famers across the board and and just just take me through that journey um of troy dorsey as he's getting ready for a boxing match what is your thought process walk me through um, a training camp walk me through the mentality of of boxing walk me through all the things you had to go through your early in your career i usually start training about six to eight weeks before i would start off with running and when you're running, it's not running like a 100-yard dash. It's running like three miles or six miles. That's what I like to do. I usually do three miles uh, during the week. And then uh, one time a week, I would do sometimes six miles. Mainly, it was three miles. And uh, during that time, you're thinking. What are you thinking? What do you think? You've got to tell yourself you're going to win. If you, if you, hear, if you hear, you're going to lose. You're gonna, uh, so often, I got cut. Like I said, well, I used to, I used to, people ask me what I used to do for a living. I used to uh, bleed for a living. I mean, I used to box for a living. <laughs> so uh, I, c I couldn't be thinking about those things. I had to be thinking about the positive things, about the things that I wanted to do, about the things that uh, I wanted to be able to support my family, be able to, I was fighting for my family. My, uh, my parents, my wife, Leslie. Uh, I met Leslie in 1982, in February of 82 at a karate tournament. And then in uh, 86, we got married. So we've been married now for uh, 35 years, this September. So I'm so fortunate to have her. She took care of our kids. She cooked my meals. For a long time, I starved myself fighting. So I would eat a baked potato once a day, or eat one thing once a day, just so, and, and not drink water. And back then, we didn't really know. Right. But uh, I, I came to find out that, yeah, you, gotta, <laughs> you have to drink some water. Matter of right. fact, let's start off with 64 ounces minimum. It, it just uh, is getting there and get in there and do it. You know, whether you're a plumber, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an attorney, whether you're a stay-at-home wife, stay-at-home mother, stay-at-home dad, whatever it is that you do, you got to just tell yourself that you can do it and you got to do the best job that you can do. That's what my parents always taught me. Do your best. And, and you won't look back over your shoulder uh, and, and have the regrets. Of course, I have some regrets, but most of the time, it, it's just all pushing forward and uh, doing what I could do to, to make the very best uh, for my family. I have a daughter, Kendra. Uh, she just had a, uh, my first grandchild. His name is Lorenzo. And my daughter, Shelly, she is also pregnant. She's going to have her baby July 7th. I found that yesterday. Nice. So this is wrapping for the news here. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're talking and you're speaking today from a mature place, an experienced place. If you could take Tony Dorsey today, all that you've I would change come my name through. to Troy though. I'm sorry, Troy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Troy. You got turning the mind. Yeah. <laughs> Troy. We were talking earlier. Troy. Um, if you could take experience, knowledgeable you today, and go back to talk to young Troy, inexperienced, green, wet behind the ears, what would you tell him? Uh, slow down and uh, no drinking no drugs, and stay away from anything that might be, uh, that might hinder my goal.